Um, thank you, Nada. Thank you, Nada, for the opportunity um, to have this conversation with so many um, fellow uh, workforce development professionals um, in this room. Um, we are here today because um, at the previous um, Nada conference, there was a panel um, speaking about workforce, speaking about the direction of workforce, where it was going. And, um, you know, as someone who's worked in workforce on the youth side, any adult education side, um, it kind of troubled me a little bit that the panel did not consist of anyone that was representing our older workers. And um, so the first opportunity to have a question on the mic, I made, <laughs> I made my way all the way up to the front of the room just to ask, um, was that where is that representation for CSEP? Where is that representation for older job seekers? Um, and that prompted them to invite me to this call today so I can share some information about our older job seekers um, and, and why it's important that they are always included um, in that conversation. So I thank you all for joining me today. Um, the title of this one is Older Workers, The Answer to Worker Shortages. And again, the underlying assumption of this workshop is that if older workers were in the workforce at the same rate as prime age workers, would we be even having a conversation about work shortage or job shortage, right? Um, but currently right now they're not. Um, so we did develop this workshop, uh, workshop based on the work that we do here um, at the Center for Workforce Inclusion. Again, uh, my name is Antoine Hicks. I am the um, new director of workforce training here at the Center for the Workforce um, Inclusion. And I will be your facilitator today. Um, some of the things I want you to take away from this presentation is to create an awareness of the value and need for our older workers. Um, highlight some of the initiatives that we do here at CWI. I won't jump into the weeds too much. We only have 30 minutes. Um, and then just again, just provide some data around um, this issue um, and just have the conversation always continuously going. Um, who we are, the Center for Workforce Inclusion is a national 501c3 nonprofit organization. Our purpose is to deliver workforce readiness programs that empower local job seekers, attract employers, transform our communities. Uh, previously known as Senior Services of America, um, under the rebranding of our um, model under our new CEO, Gary Officer, the Center for Workforce Inclusion empowers older job seekers who have been overlooked by traditional training programs with in-demand skills, resources to overcome barriers to employment, as well as pathways to uh, sustainable work. The center uh, specializes in designing and delivering workforce uh, development programs. Um, we have assessed that the future of the American workforce, we've created a strategic vision on how to best prepare that growing segment of older workers for the next century. Um, in 2023 and beyond, our goal is to expand to all 50 states, become the national leader in 50 plus workforce space and create platforms that generate 50% of our income from non-federal sources. Um, there's also a social cultural bias towards a shrinking youth workforce. All the while, the 50 plus workforce in America is a beckoning frontier on the verge of discovery. And every time we have these conversations, I am still shocked by how many people don't have this information or don't understand why this population or this segment of the population is still so important. Um, so we chose, um, we choose to lead workforce development for 50 plus Americans so we could transform the economy and generation of workers. Um, the center right now is celebrating its 60th anniversary this year. Um, in that time, we've served over 500,000 older job seekers, including 58,000 veterans. The center delivers a variety of workforce development programs to upskill and reskill uh, job seekers who are 55 and plus. Um, and what we're best known for right now is that we are a longtime national grantee of the Senior Community Service Employment Program, known as CSEP. Um, right now, CSEP is the only federal skills training for lower income older adults, and the center has been a CSEP provider in Maryland for over 50 years. All right, so let's start with language. There's a lot of language to describe older workers, and I won't even call them old people, but older workers. 
some derogator, um, but not all. Uh, we purposely called this workshop Older Workers because that is the language of workforce development, even going all the way back to JTPA. Um, but we would like to change the narrative and point to a change occurring in language. So in this workshop, we will use terms experienced worker, older job seeker. The goal is to use the most inclusive language possible when discussing workers or employees. It's also important to remember that older workers are not a monolith. Um, you have to factor in things like age, health status, finances, access to transportation, um, and services. All these play a part in an experienced worker's place in the workforce. Um, we may need to develop different strategies for different segments, but the language should always be inclusive um, going forward. All right. So who is an older worker? We got a lot of numbers here, right? I myself have come to the realization that I am an older worker. Um, if you know for a fact that on this phone call, you are older than Google, you are older than the internet, you would be honestly considered an older worker. Um, so when you hear the term older job seeker, you might think, well, who, who is that? Because there is no one number, right? It's a long range. Um, the original Age Discrimination and Employment Act, the ADAE, ADEA, I'm sorry, they prohibit employment discrimination for a uh, person's 40 years age of older. Um, the ADEA was amended in 1978 to prohibit mandatory retirement before age 70 in most occupations. Um, and then you have the Older Americans Act, which authorizes the Department of Labor to fund programs and services for anyone 60 years age, 60 years age or older. And then you have Title V of the Older American Act, which authorizes CSEP, which supports employment and training programs for older job seekers who want to enter or re-enter the workforce. And the impact of this legislation on the probabilities of older pe persons remaining in the labor force is why we are here today. Currently, the Center for Workforce Inclusion is, is, is constantly advocating to Congress about the need for CSEP and how CSEP should be protected. Um, we, we almost experienced a scenario where the previous administration got rid of CSEP. Um, but again, because of the hard work and advocacy that we do for age discrimination and the importance of CSEP, we are luckily still here today, but we feel that, um, that, you know, it's fragile. It's, it's not as concrete as we would like it to be. Um, but the future of retirement in America is work. And I say that twice every time I say it, the future of retirement in America is work. So we have to have conversations about ageism age bias, and the value of older workers, because those are more important um, than ever. So there's a myth propagated by the retirement industry is that people over the age of 65 should retire. And I don't think, I don't believe that that is very accurate. And I'll tell you why. This lady right here, this is my mother. 71 years old, she's on her third job. She's on her third career. She's already retired twice. And I asked her when she went to when she went back to this more recent job, mom, you worked. You've been working since she was 15 and a half. You're 71 years old. Just please have a seat. <laughs> she was like, well, why should I retire if I love working? Right? And it's because work represents an opportunity to give value to others the community. It gives you a network of friends, associates to be with. It gives you something to do with your intellectual and physical energy. Um, I was reading in a, in a paper one day that the CEO of Target had his contract changed so that he could work um, past 65. So let's play a little game. I like to call this truth or bias, right? Um, first, truth or bias. Older workers are just waiting for retirement or Social Security they don't care about their careers, right? That is a bias. The fact is people are working longer and they're focused on more than just a paycheck. 
Older workers care about their jobs. They're interested in progressing their careers, taking on challenges, learning new skills. Um, older workers are motivated by causes like community, mission, and a chance to make their world better. Our good friend Stephen Hawkins even said, work gives you meaning and purpose, and life is empty without it. Because many people, particularly those who have enjoyed long and meaningful careers, they just like to work. Uh, people who stop working and retire often suffer from depression, heart attacks, a general, and just a general malaise. Um, of not having as much purpose in their lives. The next truth of bias. Older workers are less productive and not as reliable as younger workers. That is also a bias. When you're comparing younger adults, and let's say age 20 to 31, with older adults, let's say age 65 to 80 on 12 tasks, researchers found the latter group to be consistently more productive and reliable. They attribute this to the older adults having learned strategies to solve the task, uh, constantly high motivation level, as well as a balanced daily routine and a stable mood. Truth or bias. Older workers have trouble learning new things. Also a bias. Older workers actually retain information longer and have higher training rates than younger workers. They also have higher motivation, good attention spans. Older workers are eager to learn new tools for today's economic needs. Their level of experience gives them an extra edge because it's easier to build off the foundation of an understanding than to start new work and training programs and learning opportunities. Warren Buffett. 89 years old, is still regarded as one of the most brilliant brains in the world of finance. I'd invest my money with him. And there's countless other individuals in their 60s and 70s, actively engaged with their careers and certain to avoid retirement. Through the bias, older workers aren't as digitally savvy as younger people. And as much as I would love that to be true, that is also a bias. My mother is now an avid text message user. She uses emojis and everything. Recent surveys by the Pew Research Center have found that among 65 plus, two thirds use the internet. 75% of them use it daily. 37% of us use at least one form of social media and 42% own a smartphone. That is technology right there in the palm of your hand. All right, truth and bias again. Older workers cost more. Again, another bias. Older workers actually cost less than their younger coworkers. One of the highest costs to an employer is recruitment. High employee turnover causes an employer to need to continuously recruit, hire, and train new employees. Because older workers tend to have lower turnover rates, they cost their employers less in recruitment. And the research shows that workers over 50 years old are five times less likely to change jobs compared to people 20 to 24. An older employer won't jump ship soon after being hired, saving their employer time and money. So let's just call it what it is. Age discrimination. We have to be very vigilant in, in, in understanding that at the end of the day, it comes down to age discrimination. Because age discrimination against Americans ages 50 plus have robbed the U.S. economy of over 850 million just in 2018 alone. And age discrimination continues to create barriers to employment for older workers and is, a, is projected to cost the U.S. economy $4 trillion by the year 2050. Millions of their boomers, millions of boomers in their 60s still want to or need work to, uh, and need to work and are having a hard time finding jobs. Many older people lack the money needed to sustain them in retirement, especially as life, especially as life expectancy has increased. The Federal Reserve Bank reports roughly 44% of Americans say their retirement savings are not on track. And remember, many people, no matter their age, just 
do not have enough money to retire, even if they wanted to. In the U.S., it literally costs you $1 million to retire at age 65, yet 21% of Americans have no savings. 10% have less than $5,000 in savings. And we remember COVID. 62% of retirees said they left earlier than planned. 67 of them said they left two years early. And a significant percentage said they had been laid off. We need our silver economy, all right? Older Americans contribute an estimate, 40% of the national economic output. That's amazing, despite the fact they only make up 35% of the population. Through their spending on goods and services, the 50 plus population supported one third of the world's jobs in 2020. That's just over 1 billion jobs generating 23 trillion in 23 trillion in labor income. At the end of this decade, which is which is only 6 6 almost 6 years from now, the contribution of the 50 plus population to global GDP will rise to an inflation adjusted 65 trillion. That's 36% of GDP. And by 2050, those age 50 plus are projected to support 1.5 billion in jobs. That's 39% of the jobs worldwide and their impact on labor income will more than double to 118 trillion. You want some more numbers? Oh, I got them by the pound. The demographic story by the numbers, because we all love them, right? Now, when we're talking about conversations about ageism, age bias, the value of older workers, um, this is needed because, again, the number of older workers is growing. And this is according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, right? You have, uh, in the next two years, workers age 55 or older will compromise 25% or 40 million, 41 million workers in the workforce. Uh, there's currently 10.8 million job openings, and this was as of February 2023. Um, also, approximately 1 million unemployed are over the age of 55, and that was as of February 2023, when the uh, unemployment rate nationally was 3.7%. So that means professional business services led payroll gains would uh, let's take 68,000 followed by healthcare with 48,000 and retail with 44,000. These are these are payroll gains in these industries. Leisure and hospitality, which had been leading in the sector, which been a leading sector in the pandemic era, jobs recovery rose by just 31,000 for the month after averaging 90,000 in the previous seven months of 2022. So there is, there is opportunity there for our older job seekers. True demographic story, right? This is according to the CDC. The rapid expansion in longevity has been explained by the size of the baby boom generation and the baby boomers' long lifespan. Life expectancy is now down from 79 years old prior to the pandemic. But life expectancy does vary by ethnicity, and life expectancy is a factor individuals use in working beyond their retirement age. The other ones is money and health. The senior population is doubling, right? By 2060, nearly 100 million Americans will be 65 or older. This reflects the senior population more than doubling over 40 years. So is there a labor shortage? Well, in 2021, businesses added an unprecedented 3.8 million jobs, yet the workforce participation remains below pre-pandemic level, meaning we have 3.4 million fewer, work America, fewer Americans working today compared to February of 2020. So what does this all mean? Coming out of pandemic, we had news stories about worker shortages. Uh, we've heard terms like the great resignation and quiet quitting. Yet the economy, I say, remains strong. You can have varying opinions on that. 
um, depending on how you feel when the last time you left the grocery store. Uh, but as far as jobs, they're being added constantly. We are experiencing record lows in unemployment, right? Jobs are added. Workers are not are not actually returning to work. You know, um, and you have some jobs that are being slashed by businesses. So if I look at older job seekers versus that labor shortage, right? Businesses still need workers. As the demographic slash show, there are older workers. I that's like a that's like a that's like a, the peg that fits. But how do we get businesses to see older workers? How do we prepare older workers for those jobs? How can we bring these groups together, the vacancies, the older job seekers, right? Because according to Market Watch, millions of boomers in their 60s still want or need to work, and they're having a hard time finding jobs. Many older people lack the money needed to sustain them in retirement, especially as life expectancy is being is increasing. The Federal Reserve Bank reports roughly 44% of Americans say their retirement savings are not on track. Oh, did I give that information already? I have because it's important to remember that, right? We just do not have the ability to not work. So when you look at uh, the need for workers and you're saying the job shortage, it, it just troubles me that we do not consider our older job seekers. All right, so research from an employee scheduling company home base suggests that seniors are more engaged, more likely uh, to look forward to work, more connected to their companies, less likely to consider quitting. So this makes older workers especially attractive, especially in uh, this currently tight labor market. People age 60 and over are projected to outnumber children under the age of five within the next year. So by 2025, we expect 25% of workers in the USA to be over the age of 55. Um, this is largely a result of baby boomers reaching retirement at a faster at a rate faster than millennials can step into their place. And with the birth rates declining year over year, it will be a trend that's probably here to stay. So why hire those? Why hire older workers? Well, scientific evidence on the issue shows that for most people, raw mental horsepower declines after the age of 30. Knowledge and expertise, the main predictors of job performance, keeps increasing even beyond the age of 80. And there's also ample evidence to assume that traits like drive, curiosity, are catalysts for new skill acquisition, even during late adulthood. When it comes to learning new things, there is just no age limit. The more intellectually engaged people remain working when they are older, the more they will contribute to that labor market. So let's discuss the value of older workers because I have to advocate for them all the time. All right, right now, already half of the households around the world are headed by a person age 50 or older. And as this trend continues to expand, Older people will drive unparalleled levels of economic activity and demands for new types of products and jobs. Good attitude. I don't know how often this is overlooked. Out of all the age groups, workers over the age of 55 demonstrate the highest level of positive engagement on the job. Strong work ethic. 70% of uh, 70% of surveyed HR managers cited a strong work ethic and the value of a multi-dimensional experience as advantages of hiring older workers. Loyalty. You can't find people who are willing to just work at the same job for 30 years anymore. Department of Labor study found that newly hired older workers are more likely to remain in a position with the company over the long term than workers who are hired at younger ages. There was a time when I was look when I was looking for jobs when I was younger, they didn't have to ask you about gaps in your employment. Now we literally have to ask about gaps in employment, and they're there for a whole host of reasons. And when you look at old workers, they're just more 
in tune with staying loyal to the company that hired them and working until they can't work anymore. And the diversity. You know, work roses can grow when there is diversity of thought from an intergenerational intergener workplace. I'm sorry, I'm all over the place today. Intergenerational workplace, okay? Um, we talk about collaboration in workplace all the time, right? And we talk about putting people in teams. And the one thing that we do when we talk about putting people in teams for projects is trying to get a diverse uh, a group, right? People who could bring different ways of thinking to the box. And you have to look at that the same way when you're introducing a, a multi-generational workforce. You have your older workers, you have your younger workers. And these people, you put these people together for that synergy of that old ideals and new energy. But if it's not there, you don't have an inclusive workforce. So let's talk about their labor contribution. Engaging older workers could raise GDP per capita by 19% over the next three decades. The labor force itself is expecting to increase by 8.9 million or 5.5% from 2020 to 2030. That's just this next decade. And over that same time, among people age 75 and older, the labor force is expected to grow by 96.5%. So in conclusion, people are living longer and that trend is expected to continue. Longevity gives older adults both an opportunity and a need to continue working. Approximately one in four workers in the U.S. labor force is over the age of 55. In 2020, 50 plus supported one third of the world's jobs. That's over 1 billion jobs generating 23 trillion in labor. And by 2025, age 55 plus will compromise 25 uh 25% of 41 million workers. The economic contribution of the 50 plus population will triple by 2050. So I thank you all for your time today for this conversation. Thank you for um, hearing me and understanding the, uh, the need for our older job seekers. They are going to be the fastest growing population um, in the labor force segment, people over 55. The, the Bureau of Labor Statistics projection for 2024 shows an increase of labor participation for those 55, for those over 55 to 25%, while other all other groups show a decrease. So we have to have more conversations about older job seekers. That is my presentation. Um, if there are any questions and or comments, um, please you can throw them in the chat. Um, if anybody has a question, you know, maybe we can come up. We have a little time left. Maybe I don't know if we can take any questions, but if they need to, um, uh, let me know. If not, um, thank you for your time today. Thank you, Nada, for the opportunity to speak about our uh, forgotten population. And I hope to see all you workforce professionals out here doing the good work that we're doing and not forgetting our forgotten population. Thank you so much.